happy holidays and cheers to the new year. We are almost at 2022 and I am here to wrap up what I watched in December of 2021. I'm drinking a Christmas Negroni. It's not Christmas, it's just a Negroni, but I'm calling it a Christmas Negroni because it's in a Christmas cup. I've been looking forward to making this video for a while now because a lot of good movies this month. And I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who watches my videos. I especially love making these movie ones and I know they're not probably for everyone, but those who enjoy them, I do appreciate your feedback and I love to see in the comments the movies that you recommend or what you also watch this month or if we have any in common or if our thoughts are different. I really appreciate you being here. Cheers and let's get on with the movies. I am going to start with the new movies that I saw this month that are new for 2021 and then I'll go into like the Christmas movies and then I'll leave the randoms for the end. The Christmas movies are a big part of this list and I recommend you save this video or list for next Christmas so that you have more Christmas movies to watch. <laughs> so of course I have to start with Spider-Man because it's the movie of the month. Probably the movie of the year. Which coming from someone like me who is not even a big Marvel fan, I loved this movie so much. I'm so glad we saw it in theaters. I definitely recommend seeing it in theaters if you can. It it's a theater movie. I was always a big fan of Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man and when those movies first came out in the early 2000s, I, I owned the DVDs, I love them. And since then, I haven't loved Spider-Man the same. I wasn't crazy about Andrew Garfield, I wasn't crazy about Tom Holland, I just kind of didn't care anymore. But then this movie came out and it was just like chef's kiss. It has a lot of nostalgia in it, it's funny, there's plenty of action. I really can't say much, unfortunately, because spoilers, and I, I really feel like there's nothing to say except it was amazing, and you should watch it. The next movie I just have to talk about is called The Last Duel, and this did come out this year. It came out maybe a few months ago, but it went completely under the radar, and it kind of did really bad in the box office. People did not go to the theaters to watch it, including us. We, I guess we just totally missed out on that opportunity. We ended up renting it the other night on Redbox. And wow, that's a movie that I'm disappointed that we did not see in theaters because it is a theater worthy movie. And I think that people need to go see it, at least rent it because it's such a shame that this movie kind of went unnoticed. The Last Duel is a historical drama. It's actually based on true events. It has Matt Damon, it has Adam Driver, it has Ben Affleck. I believe that the actual script was written between Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, if I'm not wrong. It's set in the medieval times, which coming from someone like me who really doesn't even like medieval type of movies, I'm not really one to enjoy that style. This one just... They did it right. I don't want to go too much exactly into the details of what the plot is, but I will say this movie does something so different that I really enjoyed. It has three perspectives in the movie. So something happens, and the first perspective of the movie is from Matt Damon's character's point of view. Then the second half of the movie is the same exact story and scenario, but from Adam Driver's character's point of view. And then the last scenario, is from the woman in the movie. Jodie Comer is the actress. It goes into her point of view of the scenario that happened. I love the concept of showing the same movie three times from different point of views and at the end you get this like last duel that is pretty awesome. One of my favorite movie critics on YouTube is Chris Duckman and he was the one that made a video about this movie and said that he was totally disappointed in the audience because nobody went to go watch this movie and he was saying how it's one of the best movies he saw all year and we were like we kind of have to watch it now so i will say thanks to chris duckman <laughs> for opening our eyes into watching this movie because truly was one of the best well if not for spider-man it would have been my number one movie this month but um spider if they're just totally different movies spider-man's fun this one's more like more heavy and dramatic and dark but in the best way just give it a chance. Get back to me. Let me know what you think. Next up, we have a movie that just came out on Netflix called Don't Look Up. It has Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Timothy Chalamet, Ariana Grande, Meryl Streep, Chris Evans, Jonah Hill. It is a comedy disaster film. Two low-level astronomers must go on a giant media tour to warn mankind of an approaching comet that will destroy planet Earth. 
it definitely has a lot to correlate with covid vaccines however you want to look at it and what we're going through in the world right now but instead in this movie it's a comet coming towards the earth this movie was directed by adam mckay who is the same director from like anchorman and Step Brothers, and uh I'm not gonna lie, I liked it. I actually really enjoyed it, but I thought it would be funnier considering who the director is. I was expecting the humor to be elevated to a different notch than it was. This felt more like a dark humor, more on the serious tone, but I just wanted it to be more ridiculous, I guess. I don't know. I will say Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie, amazing. I actually really liked it, but let me tell you, people have been not happy with this movie. It has currently a 55% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a lot of people just did not like it. And I'm curious if you've seen it, what you thought. Next up, we have Ron Gone Wrong, and this is on Disney Plus right now. It just came out this month as well. Barney is a socially awkward schoolboy who receives a robot named Ron, a walking, talking, digitally connected device that's supposed to be his best friend, till his new toy starts to hilariously malfunction. I will say, I really like this more than I thought I would. This gave me Big Hero 6 vibes, if you like Baymax. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was uh, interesting because it definitely kind of feels like something that could be possible in the future, maybe. <laughs> I imagine that instead of phones, one day we all have these little robots who go around with us and they do what the phone does, but you just talk to the robot and it does everything. And it's kind of like your own personal walking Siri. But the main character's robot is completely off <laughs> and is does not function the way it's supposed to and it's hilarious but adorable at the same time next up we have Encanto in Spanish it's Encanto I guess in English it would be more like Encanto and this is also on Disney Plus this is a musical comedy so it's about a Colombian family and everybody in the family has some type of magical power of some sort except one of the characters Maribel the main character who has no powers and no magic and then it kind of goes into her kind of figuring out what her purpose or role is in the family. My honest opinion, I didn't like it that much. This is the most musical of the Disney movies that I've seen so far in a while. It has a lot of songs and I'm not a fan of all the songs and that was kind of, you know, I just felt like there was a lot of songs. It did struck a chord and I did get a little emotional at the end. I love the representation of Hispanic families in this movie. My main issue was the songs. <laughs> there was Colombian vibes and I loved some of the songs for the Hispanic flair and then some songs had like almost like a rap kind of Hamilton inspired vibe to it. And then I understood what they were trying to do with that, but it just, for me, it, I d it didn't work. And I don't know. I'm just being picky. I didn't like the songs that much. By the way, we did try to watch Matrix. And... Mm -mm. Nope. Okay, so going into the Christmas movies, I decided to try to categorize the different movies into different, like, categories. <laughs> we have kid-friendly comedy, or, like, family-friendly films. We have action thriller horror, romance, and adult comedy. So like a little bit more on the raunchy side. So the first category is comedy and kid-friendly movies. I would put Elf, The Grinch, Home Alone, Santa Claus. All those films would be in this category. And all those films I did watch this month. But I'm not going to talk about them because I feel like we all know those films. I'm not going to talk about films that everybody has heard of or has definitely seen. So I'm going to start with a new Christmas movie that just came out called 8-Bit Christmas. And this is currently on HBO Max. In 1980s Chicago, a 10-year-old embarks on a quest to get the latest and greatest video game system for Christmas. So this is all centered around the idea of the Nintendo system. And I, I love that about this. I thought the movie was fun. It's cute. I think it's appropriate for the family. I like that it's all centered around how much he wants this video game console and he's doing everything in his power to try to win it because his father won't get it for him. I liked it. It was a good Christmas movie and if you haven't seen it yet, there's still time. It's not Christmas is, I mean it's kind of over but like it's, who cares. The next movie on my list is Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever. This is a 2014 comedy adventure film that is actually free on YouTube. Grumpy Cat helps a little girl find the spirit and charm of Christmas in a holiday adventure. The Grumpy Cat is voiced by Aubrey Plaza, which you may know from Parks and Rec. This movie is supposed to be 
bad and it's making fun of itself the whole time which I appreciated but I will say that it wasn't bad enough for what it was trying to do if that makes any sense like there's still a, an air of it trying to be a good movie that I felt like it was confusing because I wanted it to be worse this movie is definitely very heavily based on satire and the whole grumpy cat thing I still thought it was pretty okay I could see kids loving it if you haven't watched it with your kids or you're looking for something different to watch. Next up we have Jack Frost and this is a 1998 family fantasy film that is currently on HBO Max. A year after Jack's tragic death in a car accident on Christmas Day, Charlie plays a mournful tune on his family's harmonica. Much to his surprise, the elder Frost is magically brought to life as a snowman on the family lawn. If I had seen this film when I was a kid, I would have had nightmares about my father dying on Christmas and him coming back as a snowman because it's that's a terrifying thing. That would have been a horror movie for me, seeing the snowman. I struggle with the concept of it being a kid-friendly film, but it, that's, what, that's what it's supposed to be, I guess. It has a 19% on Rotten Tomatoes. I really didn't enjoy it that much. It was sad. Again, if this is for the kids, I think it's a little spooky and sad for kids. And if this is for the adults, it's too much of a sentimental, kid-friendly film to be for adults. Next we have Fred Claus and this is a 2007 comedy fantasy that's also on HBO Max right now. If you like Vince Vaughn and his humor or style of comedy then you will definitely like this movie. So the concept is that Fred is the brother of Santa Claus and he basically needs to help out on Christmas Day and it becomes a whole thing where he has to kind of like take over and I will say I actually I thought it was cute. I think it's kid friendly enough. I think families will enjoy it. I think adults will appreciate Vince Vaughn and his style, but then kids will find humorous other parts of the film. Next up we have Jingle All The Way, and I cannot believe I have never seen this one till this year. This is a 1996 family comedy that is actually free on YouTube and on Tubi, and on Hulu, and on Disney Plus, and on Amazon Prime, so go watch it because every single platform has it for free, and they really want you to go see it. This one also got a 19% on Rotten Tomatoes, so... <laughs> I feel like it's hard to be a harsh critic on Christmas movies, especially family-friendly ones, because they're kind of meant to be like cringy and, and not like good, right? Am I like confused or is that, I don't know, kind of the whole point is that they're supposed to be kind of dumb? I will say Arnold Schwarzenegger was a horrible actor in this movie and I have to only assume it's because it's supposed to be that way and he was supposed to be bad at it. Okay, now we're moving on to the crime and thriller or action thriller section of the list and this is the category where Die Hard would fall into. This is These are the films that have Christmas in them but they're not necessarily a Christmas film. Comment down below and let me know, do you consider Die Hard a Christmas film? To me, it's a Christmas film, why not? So the first film in this list is Reindeer Games, and this is a 2000 crime action film that has Ben Affleck in it and Charlie Theron. So basically, he gets out of prison and goes after his prison mate's girlfriend, and then it's this whole twist of fates that happen where he ends up being part of a casino robbery. I actually thought this movie was fun. And again, uh, the ratings don't look great. It has a 26% on Rotten Tomatoes. I will say the ending, like the, the twist at the end, I liked it. And by the way, you can find Reindeer Games free on Pluto TV, but if you've ever dealt with Pluto TV, you know how complicated it is to find things on there. Next up, we have The Long Kiss Goodnight, and this is a 1996 action mystery film that's currently free on Tubi. It has Gina Davis and Samuel Jackson. I thought this was a fun idea for a film, a, a mother who thinks she's just like a normal lady, and then she realizes that she's actually an assassin, but she just had like amnesia and she just forgot that she was actually like working with the government and she's this like top-notch killer. Samuel Jackson is this hilarious guy the whole movie who is like her, you know, sidekick character. Um, I liked it a lot. Next we have Lethal Weapon and this is a 1989 action thriller that's currently on HBO Max and has Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. 
This one has an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. It also was a good like action Christmas film. The last one in this category is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and this is a 2005 mystery crime that is not free anywhere. It has Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer. Now ironically, this one has the highest rating from all these action films I just mentioned. This one has an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes and I will say this is the one that I liked least. I found it very confusing and it was all over the place and I felt like I lost track at some point in the film about what was happening and I just kind of like dozed off and just I couldn't meh. Okay moving on to my favorite category which is Christmas horror movies. This is where Krampus would be in but I did not include Krampus because everybody knows about Krampus. The first one is Better Watch Out and this is a 2016 horror thriller that is currently free on Pluto TV, Peacock, Tubi, Voodoo, Crackle, Ashley travels to the suburban home of the Lenners to babysit their 12-year-old son, Luke. She must soon defend herself and the young boy when unwelcome intruders announce their arrival. This was such a fun film for me because it definitely is not what it seems and it takes a totally different turn of events and it is not exactly an intruder film as much as it starts off that way. I did not expect what would happen. It got an 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. It seems like most people agree it's a really good film. I highly recommend watching it if you have not seen. Better watch out. Next up we have P2 and this is a 2007 horror thriller that is currently free on Pluto TV, Voodoo, Amazon Prime. Angela is working late on Christmas Eve. When she finally decides to leave, she goes down to the parking garage to get her car but it won't start. Thomas, the garage's security guard, offers to help. Now Angela must fight for her life in order to escape from the garage. I also really was surprised and impressed with this film. And I'm also very surprised to see that it has a 35% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know why it got such a bad rating. Because I, I really thought it was a fun, fun ride. This one definitely falls closer to the thriller side. I think it's worth a watch if you haven't seen it and it doesn't have to be during the Christmas time. You can watch it at any time of the year. Next we decided to watch Black Christmas but not the original. The 1974 version we saw last Christmas so we decided to see the, the remake this year. This is the 2019 version. Apparently there is also a 2006 version that we have not seen. The holiday season turns deadly for a group of sorority sisters who are stranded at their campus house during a snowstorm. These co-eds better watch out for a vicious killer who is on the loose and he will not care if they're naughty or nice. This one is currently on HBO Max. I'm kind of now curious to see the 2006 one because it had a 15% so it must be like really bad. <laughs> I will say the 1974 classic Black Christmas film is the best. Um, if you haven't seen it, I would suggest seeing that one before watching any of the remakes. This is definitely a slasher style horror film based on a sorority. I didn't hate the remake. They definitely go a different direction. I just don't understand why we have to do remakes all the time. I, that's the only thing I just don't get. Okay, so here is the worst of the list of the horror Christmas films we saw this month and it's called Sick for Toys. This is a 2018 film. A nice guy who always finishes last agrees to go on a dinner date with an alluring woman. Once he arrives, he realizes the woman and her brother are not what they seem. Basically a film about a woman who wants the guy to be her human toy. I <laughs> it's actually directed by David Del Rio and quick little thing about that. The reason we watched it was because it was directed by David DeRio. If you've seen Bigger and the Beauty or if you've seen A California Christmas, he is in those films and he is actually from Miami. My boyfriend Jeremy and him used to dance in the same studio together back in the day and I think it's really cool to see someone who is from Miami do so well. He's been in a bunch of Netflix stuff. He's directing films. I think that's amazing. I will say this is the worst film we saw the whole month. Sorry, David Del Rio, we love you, but that... It is uncomfortable, it is boring, It's the the acting is bad, the idea is not good. It's currently free on Tubi. If you have Tubi and you want to see it and you're curious. Speaking of A California Christmas, I wanted to go into the category of romance. And I'm not gonna lie, I really intended on watching more romance, like cheesy Christmas style Hallmark movies and I, I I didn't end up doing that. It's just not my thing and I, I'm gonna try next year again to see if I can get into them. But I did watch A California Christmas, the first one, and then I saw the one that just came out. City Lights, which is the second film. Again, it has David Del Rio in it. Cheers to David Del Rio. <laughs> California Christmas came out in 2020 of last year on Netflix and then 
City Lights just came out this year. A wealthy charmer poses as a ranch hand to get a hardworking farmer to sell her family's land. I didn't mind it. <laughs> I tried watching A Night Before Christmas, which is the one with the Vanessa Hudgens on Netflix that like there's an actual knight who travels, whatever. It was, I couldn't even get through it. So the fact that I could get through a California Christmas means that it wasn't that bad. And actually the second film, City Lights, is way more petty and way more drama and kind of more entertaining than the first one. I actually like the second one a lot. So the last category of Christmas films is the raunchy adult comedy films. Not all of them are going to be considered necessarily raunchy, but they're just not kid friendly. And the first one is The Night Before. This is a 2015 comedy that has Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. For the last 10 years, lifelong buddies Ethan, Isaac, and Chris have gathered on Christmas Eve to celebrate the holidays with a bang. As Isaac prepares to become a first-time father, the friends realize that their annual tradition is coming to a sad end. I will say this movie was a lot of fun. I laughed a lot. If you like Seth Rogen, and if you like, you know, movies like that, that have a lot of like, you know, there's drugs in it, there's inappropriate jokes, a lot of tripping and a lot of just nonsense and chaos and things get out of whack. But they throw in the Christmas spirit and it's the perfect blend of the two worlds. It's like Pineapple Express meets Hangover meets a Christmas movie. So I liked it. Next we have Trading Places and this is a 1983 comedy that has Eddie Murphy and Dan Eichroyd? Eichroyd? Is that how you say it? It also has Jamie Lee Curtis in it. The basically, Eddie Murphy's character somehow gets switched with the other character and they trade places. Eddie Murphy's character becomes like rich and lives this lavish life. While Dan's character, he gets sent to jail and then he meets Jamie Lee Curtis and he's trying to get back to his estate and it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> it's all right. It's, it's entertaining. I wanted it to be funnier, I guess. I'm not sure. Okay, the last one on this list is Scrooge, and this is a 1988 fantasy comedy that is currently free on Pluto TV, if you can find it, because Pluto TV is a mess. And it stars, of course, Bill Murray. It's a modern take of The Christmas Carol. I didn't like it as much as I wanted to, honestly. I preferred The Muppets Christmas Carol. <laughs> I guess I didn't find Bill Murray as funny as I wanted to find him. Um, he just came off so obnoxious and I know that was the whole point his character was supposed to be obnoxious But like I just didn't care for him ever at any point and I don't know I thought I can include some honorable mentions These are films that we did not see this year But we saw actually last year or in other previous years and they're just they're not like your traditional Christmas movies But they are worth putting in your list first up. We have Batman Returns It has Christmas in it next up. We have Just Friends this is one of the first movies I ever watched with Ryan Reynolds, and there is Christmas in it. Edward Scissorhands. It's not just a Halloween movie, it's also a Christmas movie. Gremlins, same thing. It has Christmas in it. It's not just a Halloween season movie, it also falls into the Christmas spirit. And I also wanted to throw in Happiest Season. This is a film that came out last year. It has Kristen Stewart and a few others in it, and honestly, it's actually pretty good. So I just thought if you haven't seen it, you might want to check that one out. Okay, I finished my drink, and it's officially the last of the movies in this list. This is the last seven things I'm going to mention, and they're gonna, I'm going to go by quick because I've been talking too long. So next up, we have Evan Hansen. And this is a movie that I have been wanting to see for a while. It's a musical. It did come out earlier this year. Evan Hansen is an anxious, isolated high school student who's aching for understanding and belonging amid the chaos and cruelty of social media age. He soon embarks on a journey of self-discovery when a letter he wrote for a writing exercise falls into the hands of a grieving couple whose son took his own life. This movie was just so heavy. Like, it, it made me cry <laughs> a lot more than I... I just felt like it was heavy on my heart the whole time and I know that was the whole point but it was just a sad musical. Any movie obviously with the subject of suicide is never an easy watch. So I guess I guess I should have known going into it that it wouldn't be like a fun musical time. I, and I really did like some of the songs but I just don't think it's the kind of movie I would ever want to watch again. Next we have The Humans and this is another new movie that came out in 2021. It's a drama. It actually has Amy Schumer in it, which I was totally surprised to see. Eric Blake gathers three generations of his Pennsylvania family to celebrate Thanksgiving at his daughter's apartment in Lower Manhattan. As darkness falls and eerie things go bump in the night, the group's deepest fears are laid bare. 
This sounds like it should be some kind of like horror movie and it's really not. In fact, it's a Thanksgiving movie where you are like a fly in the wall and you're just watching this family converse <laughs> and that's all that happens pretty much. It's a family drama and you're just watching a very normal feeling family talk to each other and things come out. But it feels like a fly in the wall experience. It feels like you're not supposed to be there and you're just watching this family the whole time. But it was kind of boring. I watched the finale of Money Heist and I will say if you never got into Money Heist or in Spanish Casa de Papel, I highly recommend it. It is so good and the ending holds up. I love the professor. He's like my favorite head honcho guy in a show since Walter White from Breaking Bad who will forever be my favorite but this comes close to that in a different world. It's different kind of human but I don't know. Money Heist is so good. All the people in it are good. It's such a fun journey and if you have not given it a chance, I highly recommend like binge watching through the whole thing now that it's all out because unfortunately every, I had to wait every time for each little section to come out. So it's perfect timing to take advantage and just watch the whole thing. Another show I watched is the second season of Emily in Paris. This show is just silly. It's a girl named Emily who goes to Paris and she gets into a, like a love triangle and uh, she works in this office with a bunch of French people and it's very heavily based on French like jokes about French people and how they act compared to Americans and I like it though. It's it's a dumb show but yet somehow I find it still charming and if you're into like girly rom-com style stuff then you probably will like it. The next film is We Need to Do Something and this is also a 2021 film that came out earlier this year. It is a psychological horror and it's currently on Hulu. What's really weird about this movie is that if you go to the cast, it says Ozzy Osbourne is in this and I, he's not in the movie so I have no idea what happened there. <laughs> the concept behind this plot was actually very good. This crazy storm happens and this family of four are stuck in this bathroom for days and they cannot get out because they're stuck inside. Um, like there's something trapping them in and a lot of weird stuff starts happening and unfortunately this movie took a turn for the worse. I, I don't know, I was really enjoying it and then it, it kind of like took a weird direction and it ended so strangely with completely no answers and just left me with tons of questions and it's really a shame because it really did catch my attention. I spent the whole movie very invested and then I felt like at the end I was just like, I was left just confused. Now one of the best movies we saw this month that I um, could not put higher on this list because it, it wasn't a new movie but it really was one of the best movies we saw this month and it's The Grand Budapest Hotel and this is a 2014 comedy crime that is directed by Wes Anderson. I think it's like one of, well actually I think it is our favorite Wes Anderson film so far. We also really liked Rushmore. Curious to know if you've watched The French Dispatch and if you have let me know what you thought. We still haven't seen that one yet but we definitely plan to. The last film on this list is called Welcome Home. It is a 2018 thriller drama that actually has Aaron Paul in it, speaking of Breaking Bad. This is another Airbnb thriller horror movie that has been done many times, except this one got on Rotten Tomatoes a 10%, which I think is so rude. <laughs> it's not that bad. I actually didn't, I found it entertaining. I, I, I would give it a 50 something. I have no idea why I got a 10%. It's, it really wasn't that horrible. If you're curious to watch it, it's on Netflix. I thought it was pretty decent. Do you feel like ratings are important whenever you're gonna watch a movie? Do you like look it up and, and check on the ratings or do you just kind of like go in without knowing? Because I'm not gonna lie, I always look at ratings and kind of when I see it's really bad, I get more curious to watch it. And if I see it's really good, then I definitely want to watch it too. So it kind of goes both ways. Like bad ratings also make me watch things. Anyways, I hope you had a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and I am looking forward to making more videos in 2022. Please recommend movies for me to watch in January so that I can include them in my list for next month. Happy New Year and toodaloo!